All right, we've discussed on the program ever since the FDA rewrote their rule book to allow pharmacies to sell chemical abortion drugs. There have been some of the majors, biggies, pharmacists, CVS, Walgreens. They've literally moved forward to align their business with the abortion industry. And they've done so in spite of a huge outcry from churches and pro-life organizations. But now the Family Research Council has learned that Walmart executives have begun discussions of their own about entering the abortion business. We're hearing from sources that executive at the uh, Arkansas-based retailer, uh, they are very much aware that the public is watching them and they're concerned about a potential PR blowback. Uh, so uh, the question begs, how can we let Walmart corporate brass know that they should not enter the abortion industry? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Connor Semmelsberger. He's the Director of Federal Affairs for Life and Human Dignity here at FRC. Welcome back to Washington Watch, Connor. As always, thank you for joining us. Yeah, good to be on with you, Jody. Well, likewise, and we appreciate your leadership on this. All right, we've got... Uh, obviously, FRC, along with a host of other pro-life groups, uh, have already been active in trying to urge CVS, Walgreens, some of these others not to sell abortion pills. But now, Walmart, are they next? Tell us about this. Yeah, well, we surely hope not. Um, as you mentioned, we had sent letters just last Friday to both of those big retailers, CVS, Walgreens, urging them to reconsider their already public statements that they were going to search for this uh, certification to prescribe chemical abortion pills. And right now, Walmart, I think, is, is the, the next big uh, dog really considering this. And what makes them unique is they're not just a corner store pharmacy like those others, um, but they all, for our, all intents and purposes, are a grocery store, clothing store. Um, I mean, you can get car repairs at Walmart. They are a full-fledged service uh, uh, opportunity for most families. And to associate their name with prescribing abortion, fulfilling abortion pills, I think is just a step too far. And that's what we tried to communicate them today. And Well, it is. I mean, can, can you imagine unless, uh, someone going to Walmart for an abortion? I mean, uh, just the thought of it itself is so anti-Walmart. Uh, but let, let's, I, I want to get into that aspect here in just a moment. But uh, if you can, Connor, uh, kind of remind our viewers and listeners of the dangers of these pills. All right, we, we already know, obviously, that they, they kill innocent babies. But what about the, the risk to the mother? Yeah, they're, they're severe. And, and that's the main element that the FDA has totally ignored in this whole conversation, is that this is not just another pill. This is not an antibiotic that you get from your pharmacist or something to help you with back pain. This is something that, yes, kills an unborn child in the womb. But if there's not proper health and safety protocols in place, checking an ultrasound to see how far along a woman is, in-person prescribing, follow-up for any pre-existing conditions she has, Women, we have several, several accounts of severe adverse events to these drugs. Unfortunately, even 28 deaths recorded um, to the FDA because of these drugs alone, because uh, hemorrhaging and severe bleeding can occur for these women. And if they aren't able to get immediate emergency care to help with that or help to expel an incomplete abortion, uh, bad, bad things can happen to her health that will impact her negatively and emotionally then and even uh, for the rest of her life. And it's really sad. And this is something that the FDA has totally overlooked with their latest political move. Wow. That, that's stunning. Something that significant would be overlooked. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, how do you overlook something with that kind of devastating consequences and outcomes potentially. Uh, so Walmart executives, we're hearing, they are concerned about potential public outcry against this. Um, where do you think this is going and what, uh, what can be done to encourage them to say no? 
Yeah, and like I mentioned at the start of the, the, the segment here, uh, they are unique because how many other pharmacies we know are at your local grocery store, right? Uh, you know, your local regional grocery store also has pharmacies there that if Walmart st steps into this phase to become abortion clinic, uh, that could set a precedent for all these other uh, retail-based pharmacies that are housed in grocery stores and others. And so we really hope Walmart takes a strong stand against this uh, for those reasons. But also, I'd just like to paint a little picture for our viewers back home. Can you imagine, like you said, going to a Walmart, and here you may be getting maternity clothes, you're buying baby formula, all those things associated with caring for children in life. And right to the left is that pharmacy where a pharmacist is handing out a chemical abortion pill where a woman's going to go home and take that chemical abortion, uh, dispelling her baby. Just so saddening to see. But I think the practicalities there of them being a unique uh, provider of all of the services, we hope they set the stage and stand up to the abortion lobby, regardless of their calls, and say, no, we will not turn our pharmacies, our place of business, into an abortion clinic. I tell you, we've got an enormous opportunity here. And as you well know, Family Research Council is uh, leading a charge on this, along with other groups. And uh, But this is a, a critical issue, and perhaps people who shop at Walmart could speak to the managers there as well and urge them not to participate. Now, all this, Connor, we've got less than a couple of minutes left. Uh, but all this is taking place while Democrats are looking to actually repeal the Hyde Amendment. Uh, real quickly, tell us about this so our listeners are informed. Yeah, Biden has called for this just since he ran for president. He wants to remove a longstanding policy we have in Congress that says we will not fund direct abortions with our taxpayer dollars. So thankfully, we have a pro-life majority back in the House that can really resist this. And actually, we hope are going to pass legislation later this month or next month uh, that locks in this policy permanently. Right now, it's something that has to be renewed annually. That's why Biden administration has threatened to repeal it. So we are just hoping that they will stand strong and say, no, we do not want to fund a abortions with our tax dollars. We actually have just recent polling from last week that says 60% of Americans oppose their federal tax dollars from going to pay for abortions. About 30 seconds, Connor. At the same time, Republicans were introducing the no taxpayer funding for abortion. Uh, 15 seconds or so, what would that do? Yeah, that would lock this policy into place and it would make a pro-life fix to Obamacare, which currently is still subsidizing abortion plans. Well, Connor Simmelsberger, thank you so much. As always, you are a tremendous leader, uh, not only at FRC, but far beyond. And we appreciate you coming on Washington Watch this evening. Yeah, pleasure to be on with you, Jody.